Welcome to Wake Up with Patty Catter. Come dive into today's episode sponsored by the Patriotic Mermaid. Hello, everybody. You're listening to and watching Wake Up with Patty Catter. Today, I have a very special guest all the way in India. His name is Jonathan Augustine. Absolutely. That's great. Jonathan okay. Augustine. So okay. basically, month of August and in. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Thank Jonathan, you. for helping me out there. How are you doing? I'm very good, Patty. Thanks for having me. You know, good. it's a lovely sunny day in, in Florida, I guess, right? It is. Yes. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. And I'm sure all my listeners and watchers would actually love to know how it is in India because we're not there and we love so, hearing about India. It's 9.40 p.m. in the evening today. It's 9.40 p.m. and it's a lovely uh, rainy Friday night. Yeah, it's, it's, it's raining cats and dogs outside. It just stopped raining and my internet just got back. So I was, I was busy fixing my internet for the past one and a half hours, two hours before this interview started. <laughs> oh my because, goodness, you're yeah. probably <laughs> scrambling. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the thing is, I, I, I didn't want to reschedule because I was excited to be on your show. And, uh, I, you know, when the energy is organic, you just want to talk to someone, you know, and you're, you're looking forward to it. And yes. then you're like, I'm like, I have to get this done. And I'm like, you know what, by 9.15, if it doesn't get done, I'll just give up. And by 9.15, 9.20, things look good. I'm like, perfect. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. It always so, works out. Yeah, we, yeah. we work ourselves up sometimes for things and then it works out in the end. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. The only thing I had to do was change. I put on a shirt. So I, I know this is a podcast, but I thought, you know, let me just get in the zone. We put on a nice blue shirt. And, you know, yeah. Well, you look <laughs> nice. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, I'm excited to have you on the show because I just watched a, a movie that you created called The Lift Boy, and it's on Netflix for everybody watching. Jonathan, before we talk about the movie, I would like to talk about you, though, um, yeah. where you grew up, a little bit about your childhood, if you could just tell our listeners. Excellent. So, yeah, I'm a brown man with a white name. Uh, you know, I was born, I'm, I'm about 29 years old. I just turned 29. I was born in Mumbai. So it used to be called Bombay, now it's Mumbai in India and uh, grew up in a, a fairly low middle class, you know, middle class, low middle class household, you know, where we had like a one bedroom apartment, one, one, one bedroom kitchen and hall, you know, and uh, one television. And the only source of entertainment would be movies, motion pictures at that point, because there were limited channels and, you know, the, you know, so. So that, that's my uh, upbringing in a, in a nutshell. You know, that's where I grew up. Very humble beginnings, very modest beginnings, uh, like most people. And uh, yeah, I went to a nice uh, English medium school. I studied in, in Mumbai, Bombay. And then uh, I did my bachelor's and master's in advertising from uh, Bournemouth in the UK. That's Bournemouth University. Oh, wow. uh, so I spent yeah seven years in the UK. It's uh, four years studying. That's three years of bachelor's, one year of master's, and then three years of uh, odd jobs and you know just working in advertising and and you know doing a few businesses here and there. Some failed, some didn't, some some worked okay, okay, but the money was not great. And uh, yeah, and finally I'm like I have to make movies. I can't keep hustling. And you know, I I I, I you know I, I was becoming like. A, a bit like David Brent or a bit like Michael Scott from the office, you know, when I was, because I was working somewhere, but I was, had no interest in working. I would always indirectly connect everything to movies, you know, I'm like, Oh, you know, I, I would quote Jerry Maguire. I would quote, uh, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. I would quote the Godfather. I would end a presentation, a proper corporate presentation where you're pitching to chief marketing officers, chief technology officers, CTO, CMOs with, uh, uh, the last slide would be Jai Maga, show me the money because you know you're going to pitch and you're asking for business or you're asking for con or a contract or a tender and uh, yeah and <laughs> so I'm like you know I have to I have to somehow get back to movie making so then I came back to India in 2015 mm -hmm. so from 20 2009 to 2015 I was in the UK mm -hmm. and I came it back to India in 2015. Yeah. yeah, it must have been really hard, though, for you to raise the money to get over to the UK, because it sounds like your family was just kind of scraping by um, financially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So how did you do that? So two things. Uh, my folks, my dad took a loan, right? He took a personal loan and he, he funded my education. That, that was wow. one. Uh, apart from that, uh, so yeah, uh, my mom was a school teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, and then she retired as a school principal. So she progressed to go on to become a school principal and then retire. And my company is called Caroline Pictures. That's mm -hmm. C-A-R-O-L-I-N-E, P-I-C-T-U-R-E-S, Pictures. Uh, it's after my mom, right? Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
That is it's also my now, mother. Caroline no Fitzgerald. wonder yeah. being raised by a school teacher who turned into a principal, then no yeah. wonder you ended up with such a great in- education. She probably was on yeah. you all the time about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, so you know the the the, the uh, my, my 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 dad was still you know working his way up, and you know they, they so gradually as years passed by and as I grew older, they you know this. We, we climbed the social ladder or social pyramid. So from low middle class, we progressed to middle class, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then I had a sister, which is my sibling. She, she's eight years younger than me. So in a way, like uh, after she was born, prosperity came into the house, you know? So uh, yeah, she was quite lucky for my family and for all of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So things progressed. So then, yes, yeah, so parents basically helped me get to the UK. They funded so, my education. So in India, education is a big thing. So yeah. parents, the one thing they work for is educating their children. And that's where they spend all their money, you know, and mm-hmm. they end up even borrowing money to educate their kids. So even my sister has been blessed with a very good education, just like myself. So that's, I was quite lucky. I got lucky, you know. That's and really blessed. interesting because um, the movie, The Lift Boy, I'll let you tell yeah. our listeners what that's yeah. about, but it, it reminds me a little bit of your story as far as working and trying to get through you know school and um tell us about that so yeah the lift boy you know was inspired this happened uh, in 2015 i'd come back to bombay and i I wanted to make mumbai i wanted to make uh, let's just call it bombay because bombay has old world charm you know and it's a bit colonial as well so I came back to Bombay in 2015. I was working in television. I was an assistant director. Uh, and then I progressed to be on, become an associate director. And I also directed a few episodes of television. So I was doing that. I wasn't really happy. And this one fine day I had a day off. And I had this encounter with a, with a lift boy, a real life lift boy. Oh, wow. And that's when I'm like, well, let me make a movie called The Lift Boy. Mm-hmm. And let, let the, film, the film can be like a metaphor for life. That life's like a lift. You know, sometimes it takes you up and sometimes it takes you down. Mm-hmm depending on the buttons you press, aka choices you make. So push the right buttons, you know? And the whole idea of the film is there's a lift boy in each one of us, you know? Because at some point in your life, you know, you're stuck in a place that you don't want to be. Uh, and then you're defined by the choices you make, that aka the buttons you press, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's that, it's just a metaphor for life. And I, I felt that uh, a subject like this could be universal. So we'll make it very Indian. Indian actors or brown actors, uh, some of them speaking English, depending on the uh, where they're based and depending on which part of the social pyramid are they based in or they're set in. And, uh, and that's how we made the film. So it's very authentic, very real. And I feel the, the reason the film will remain relevant and universal is because it's a father-son story. Mm-hmm. It's a story that talks about dignity of labor. It's a story about love, compassion, hope, and failing forward and embracing failure. You know, so it's, it's as uh, simple and, and universal. It's a very simple story. There's nothing, there's no, uh, you know, uh, there's nothing if fancy or over the top in the film. It's a very linear film, but it's a sweet film. It's breezy. It's easy. Uh, and it's, yeah, again, inspired by my life and, you know, based on characters I have uh, encountered throughout the past two, so, you know, 24, 25 years, you know, because I was making the film when I was 24, 25. I was 24 when I started making the film. Wow, uh, that's young. Yeah, yeah. I was 24. I was 24 when I started writing it, and you know, and then it took a year to, you know, finish and, and get a decent draft and then raising the money to make the film and then producing it and then directing it. So the, the whole year. So I was 24 when I was doing it. So if you uh, look at The Lift Boy, it's basically 24 years of my life summarized into a motion picture, you know, based that's on real incredible. life experience. Yeah. The actors were phenomenal too. They were Thank so you. good. Thank um, you. you know, honestly, I have a really hard time focusing on watching a movie because I always feel like I have so much to do. And so I sat down to watch this movie and I was sucked right into it within the first couple of minutes, which is really important for me. So and- Patty, one quick question. How did you find the film? You know, it's because you know, it, it, Netflix is like an ocean of content. And, and, and how do you come across a movie like The Lift Boy on Netflix? Mm-hmm. If you could share that, that would be yeah. lovely. Well, you know, I was flipping through all these movies and I yeah. noticed it one day, but I didn't like get to read the previews or anything because I do have a little bit of ADD. So I'm, you know, um, 
looking through all this stuff. And I didn't watch a movie that night. Um, and then there was a man who applied to be on my podcast. His name is Daniel Levin. And I went to his website to see what he was about and who he's interviewed. And it just so yeah. happened to be that you were the last interview that he had done. And okay. so I was like, well, let's see how this guy sounds. Well, then I became interested in you yeah. because your recording was yeah. amazing. Your story was so phenomenal. Um, so that's how I, I heard about it more in detail. And so I went to um, Netflix that, I think it was that night actually. And I went ahead yeah. and I started watching it and it was so great. I love movies that make me think anyways. And I love the subtitles and I love other cultures. So it was just right up my alley. I loved it. <laughs> Thanks, Patty. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it because that's why we make movies. I mean, this is why, you know, a filmmaker makes films so that people find it, discover it, enjoy it, relate to it, and ideally reached out, you know, and, and you know, the fact that you reached out uh, after watching The Lift Boy, it, it's, it's very sweet. It made my day. Oh, Thank so you. great. Um, I also posted in my, my Facebook group, I have a podcast Facebook group, and I Lovely. asked all my listeners if they've heard of The Lift Boy, and there were several who were talking about how they watched it a few weeks ago, and they loved it, and they wanted to see more from you. So you. are you considering making any more movies? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I'm making my next film. It's called uh, Ward Boy. That's W-A-R-D, Ward Boy. Uh, Manu Voodoo. So Manu Voodoo is a guy's name, you know, and uh, he's a paranormal investigator. So he's India's leading paranormal investigator. And how he goes undercover in this haunted hospital as a ward boy to investigate hauntings. So think oh, of him wow. as, yeah, it's an adventure horror film. You know, it's adventure horror. Uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, think of him as India's Indiana Jones for adventure horror. <laughs> Indiana Jones meets Sherlock Holmes. You know, he's in that zone. Uh, so it's, it's just for a reference, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It sounds like I'm going to need a blanket for that movie so I can put it over my head during certain parts. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, the film will have scares, uh, but at the same time, it's, it's adventure horror. So, you know, you have action sequences, you know, it's, 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 it's a holistic film, you know, and it's an exciting film. It's something I'm looking forward to. It's, uh, yeah, it's, 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 an exp it's, it's a $5 million film. So wow. my first film, Your Lift Boy, was $300,000. Right, and from three hundred thousand dollars going on to making a five million dollar film, it's uh, yeah, it's exciting. <laughs> it's it's yes. it's it's yeah, nerve wracking. That's uh, incredible. That's Thank amazing. You. Congratulations for that. That's just Thanks, amazing. Buddy. Thank you. But we're currently raising the money for it. So we're raising the financing for it. And uh, the film was supposed to start shooting end of this year. But due to the pandemic, we, have, we had to push shooting by a year. Because I don't like, you know, wearing masks and wearing oh, yeah. shields and being paranoid uh, mm -hmm. all the time. It's, just, it's no fun shooting. Mm -hmm. And secondly, uh, a film like this cannot be shot like that. You need to have right. that freedom of mobility and freedom of thought. And I need my actor to see my face. Like I can't be sitting behind a mask and directing because I'm a very animated person. I'm expressive. If I like something, I, you know, I'm like, Moin, that was brilliant. Let's move on. You know, that's, uh, so I, I like doing that. And if I can't do that, you know, it's, it's, yeah. and I, I like, you know, having freedom to touch my head or my oh, face yeah. or shake my actor's hand or pat mm -hmm. him on the back. And with this pandemic, you can't do all that. You can't shoot freely. Mm -hmm. So we pushed the film by a year, mainly due to the pandemic because cases in India are rising. That's one. And number two is... Uh, uh, the sh our schedules went for a toss because uh, so timelines went for a toss. So it's got it's been postponed by one year. So we shoot sometime next year and it'll be ready for a December 2022 release. That's Christmas 2022. So like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So amazing. How do you find your actors? Because in The Lift Boy, your main actor, the um, young man in that movie, he was so good. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I mean, do you screen a lot of actors or do you have friends and you're like, oh, you're my friend, I'll just put you in that movie? Uh, I, I don't, so, yeah, so with friends, I don't do that. I, 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 I cast based on uh, which person is best for bringing that character to life, right? And that person could be an actor or a non-actor, it doesn't matter, mm -hmm. right? The idea is to get, uh, when, you know, when you write something or get, when, you, when you develop something on paper, you have a visual image in your head, mm -hmm. right? And the idea is to get that character to life, a person who speaks that way, you know, and who's, who's so on, in the lift boy, most people were non-actors. The main boy, the boy was an actor, you know, but this is like his first mainstream big film. It's, it's his first wow. big film. Yeah, this is debut, you know, feature film, debut motion picture. The female lead, Naila Masood, uh, was found in a shopping mall. 
she was literally picked up a shopping mall. She had gone to watch a film as she came out. My casting team was there. And the brief to my, I tell my casting team, don't worry about the acting. The acting is not rocket science. Right? We spend six months, one year doing it. We get the character to life. Find someone who fits the description, like, you know, the visual description in terms of hair, body, look, you know, and uh, find someone who's as close to the lingo and accent that's needed, right? Like the lift boy's best friend, Sean Lobo, the fat guy. I call him the Indian Jonah Hill, right? <laughs> and and, and, uh, and uh, he, he he's a non-actor. And I found him on Facebook. So he had commented. We had one common friend and he happened to comment on that guy's photograph. And that time Facebook had an algorithm where if someone, if, 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 if someone comments on your friend's photograph, it would kind of pop up on your timeline. Yeah. So I picked on this guy's picture. I'm like, hey, this guy looks fascinating. He looks like a unique character. He's a very unique character, mm -hmm. right? And uh, let's cast him. So he came in for an audition. We auditioned him. He messed up the audition. But he was a very good human being off camera. And he had, he had, uh, he, he had a good vibe. Like when he was not, when the camera wasn't rolling and when he, uh, when, you know, when he wasn't conscious, he was very easy and he, he was, he was Sean Robo. He was my character. I'm like, you know what? I can adapt him to the character. And sometimes what you do is when you write a character and you find someone who's good, you kind of adapt the character for them. So it works both ways. Sometimes you tweak your character. Sometimes you request the person to tweak himself or herself slightly to fit into the character. So it's a very fluid process. You know, it's what works best. There's no framework. Uh, on the next film, uh, my lead actor, Moin Khan, the boy who plays the lift boy, he's playing the paranormal investigator. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's bulking up, you know, he's, uh, so he's, he's, you're going to, you're going to see him fully bulked up and with, you know, with a beard like this, like a saint and long hair, oh, you know, wow. and yeah, 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 yeah. So he's going to be, yeah, it's going to be exciting. I can't wait to watch that. The actors Thank were you. incredible. The woman in the movie, the one that um, was tutoring the lift boy. The landlady, she, Nyla, this, yeah. this is, sorry, God. Yeah. Oh my goodness. She, she seems like somebody I would know. Um, yeah. And that's what was really neat about your characters too, is although the movie, it took place in Bombay, correct? Yeah, um, Bombay. It just felt like something that could happen here in the United States or in other countries. It's just so great. It speaks to everybody, I think. Thank you. Thank you. So, okay. you know, a, yeah. a, a producer and distributor of mine who, who, you know, who purchased the movie Singapore Rights, mm -hmm. uh, he, also, you know, he also works as an executive producer for movies. And he has a distribution company. He's done some very good films. He also does a few of the Russo brother movies. And he was like, Jonathan, would you be interested in remaking Lift Boy in, in, in Hollywood? And do you think that would be possible? I'm like, yeah, we can remake it, but it doesn't have to be remade because it's already made, right? The story's done. And he asked me one casual question. You know, do you see this happening in, 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 Ho in Hollywood? I mean, can this film be set in America? Or, or London, I'm like, it can be set anywhere because it's about human beings, human relationships. It's about this lady who's a landlady and who's very rich, right? And, and, and but she has solitude, right? And this is something which is, is very, it's, it's quite common in LA, New York, anywhere, any, anywhere across the globe, it's, it's quite common, right? And then mm -hmm. she has no purpose in life and then she meets this young boy and she feels that, you know, her experience and her, her, her talent and goodwill can be made use of, and then she finds new purpose in life. So this can be anywhere. You could literally have a, a, an African American female lead in this, and the boy can be either a Caucasian or a Latino, or you know, it, it can be a very diverse cast. It's 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 very, you know, because it's universal. So that's the beauty of it. So I told him, you know what? I don't think the film needs to be remade. But if you really, if you have the money lying spare, and you feel you want to make it, let's, you know, let, let's make it. You know, let's try and see if we can get Will Smith and Jaden Smith as the father son. Oh, <laughs> <You know? laughs> yes. <laughs> and, 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 and Oprah Winfrey as the landlady. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's me. That's my delusions of grandeur kicking in. You know? <laughs> Well, you're right, though. I, you know, I mean, of course, we could picture some U.S. actors over here, but your actors are so good. And honestly, I loved it more than um, a lot of American films just because of the culture. I love watching things with other, you know, other movies with the culture in it. It just, um, it touches my heart. It reminds us that this world is huge and that there's people all over the entire globe that are going through similar situations. So I just cool. love it. I love it the way it is. Thanks buddy. Thank you. You're welcome. Now where can, obviously we can watch you on Netflix. We can watch your movie on Netflix. Yeah. Um, what about your website? You said that's Caroline Productions. 
Uh, Caroline Pictures. So oh, pictures. it's uh, www.caroline.pictures. That's mm -hmm. C-A-R-O-L-I-N-E dot P-I-C-T-U-R-E-S. But the film's not there. So you can watch the film on Netflix. Yes. Or you can watch the film on Etisalat, which is like a Middle East uh, telecom brand. And they have their own platform. Mm -hmm. And on Etisalat, it's there with, uh, with uh, Arabic subtitles. Mm -hmm. Then you can watch it on Chili. That's C-H-I-L-I, Chili. It's an Italian, you know, pay-per-view platform. And yeah. there we have, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there you can watch it with, on Netflix, it's only English subtitles and Hindi subtitles, which is Indian subtitles. Mm -hmm. uh, the film is 70% in English. So you don't really, if you speak English and you understand English, you, you only need the subtitles for the Hindi bits, you know, mm -hmm. which uh, the fact that the emotions are universal, I think you'll get it even without the subtitles. So on Chile, we have subtitles in uh, Italian. We have subtitles in German. We have subtitles in, uh, po in Polish. Uh, Look two at languages. you! Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's thank you. Incredible, <laughs> yeah, and you're yeah. only 29 years old. That is incredible. Yeah, I, I think just... I'm too old, you know, because I spent too many years doing the lift boy. I started when I was 24, 25, I'm 29, and you know, I just want to move on to the next film. But then the pandemic came in, and you know, it's yeah. Right now, yeah. watch it. You are just two years older than my oldest daughter. <laughs> so <laughs> if you're old, you're putting me up there. <laughs> I won't admit I'm old yet. Um, you're doing so great. I just think that you're going to go so far. You've already come a long ways and I'm so proud of you. And I'm sure your family you, is buddy. so proud of you. Yeah, they're happy. You know, my, my, my folks are happy, but my dad keeps telling me, now make a mainstream movie, <laughs> you know, like Pursuit of Happiness, something big, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, 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 every, every father, every mother, you know, uh, desires the best for their offsprings, for their kids. And uh, likewise, my family also wants me to make a mainstream a commercial film or a mainstream, you know, uh, like imagine uh, uh, me directing a film like Pursuit of Happiness or which I would love to direct, you know, something like yeah. that, that kind of material is totally up my alley. Mm -hmm. or, or me directing a film like uh, Avengers or, or Black Panther, it, you know, wow. that, that, that's bragging rights, right? You know, then your parents are like, you know, my son's directing a Walt Disney motion picture, you know, and uh, yeah. <laughs> well, you I know, would love Sorry, you, you know, my listeners um, in my podcast group, they were talking about like, wow, this guy has a movie on Netflix. So, that, I mean, that's a big deal over here because right yeah. now, especially with COVID, everybody's watching Netflix. So Netflix is a great accomplishment. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So we released the film theaters in India. We released in India 18 Jan 2019. Uh, so I love theaters for me, you know, films belong in theaters. Mm -hmm. Netflix is really cool. I would love to make movies for Netflix or series for Netflix. Uh, but theaters is where film th movies belong. You know, the, 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 the pleasure of that carpet, you know, the carpet has a particular fragrance and the popcorn has that, you know, taste and that fragrance yeah. and, you know, the, when the lights go dim. So we released in India on 18 Jan, 2019. Then we did UAE on 18th April, 2019. We did Taiwan on 2nd August 2019, that's all in 2019. And Taiwan, we've been theaters for three weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, UAE, we've been theaters for two weeks. Uh, in India, we did a limited edition release. So we did three days uh, across a weekend, you know, that's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Mm -hmm. That 15,200 people watched the film in theaters on over those three days, you know, which is quite good. It was a small audience, but quite good. You know, the theaters were full. And uh, I had gone for a, for a, for a, for a, for a theater visit. And it was amazing. When you see the theater packed and people enjoying your film, you know, you just feel very happy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, I mean, here it's a lot different because none of our theaters are open right now. So we yeah, can't no, wait for yeah, that. Yeah. I love going to the movies. That's um, definitely something I do love to do. So I, and I have a feeling your next movie might be out on the big screen and I would love to see that happen. So we're making it for the big screen, you know, Patty, we are making wow. it for the big screen. It's being designed that way. The shots are like that. The music is like that. You know, the, the, the reason I say India's Indiana Jones for adventure horror is because of the people think big you know they don't think that you know he's just some random average paranormal investigator he's he's out there you know he's a quirky he's eccentric he's over the top you know and wow. uh, so it's, it's being designed for a theatrical so that's exactly why we delayed it by a year we didn't want to compromise on anything you know it's mm -hmm. costed us money it's costed us time but in the grand scheme of things i think it'll be worth it you know mm -hmm. and uh, the idea is to make films for theatrical first uh, do the best in theaters that you can, right? So we were scheduled to release in South Africa, France, and Singapore this year. That's in June 2020. But the pandemic hit us and then, you know, everything went for a toss. And then Netflix comes in and then Netflix is like, you're worldwide in 190 countries. So people across the world can watch the film on Netflix, you know? Mm -hmm. Just type in the lift boy and you'll find it. And, Amazing. Uh, 
so yeah, it's a blessing in disguise. I think eventually films find their audience. But it would be good for the next film to get a nice big release across the USA because mm -hmm. I think with that, a subject like that, War Boy Manu Voodoo, uh, even though it's going to be completely in Hindi, that's an Indian language, uh, it's still, with, with, with the subtitles, you know, the film will travel. Right? And I feel there's an audience for it, apart from the Indian diaspora audience, right? There's also an international audience that would be open to watching this film, provided it is made available to them and they know of it, right? And then the film should be good. So once they come in and they see it, then, you know, you should give them time to spread the word. And so let's hope for the best, you know, let's, the, the, the film needs to first you know, get made and then release in India and do well. And then uh, God and the universe willing, the film will find a good audience in theaters. You know? Mm -hmm. I know it will. I, you're just such a phenomenal person and I love your attitude and I love the reason that you made Lift Boy and I'm excited to see your next movie. So Thanks, buddy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being on the show and I'm going to go pleasure. ahead and um, keep sharing the Netflix movie, the Lift Boy. I'm so excited about Please it. We'll, Thank you. Yeah, we'll share the other links too because we do have several people who listen around the world and they're watching around the world now, which is exciting. So I'll help get the word out as much as I can. Thank you, Jonathan. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for having me. And by, if by any chance you know any Hollywood multi-millionaire or multi-billionaire who's interested in motion pictures, Hook me up, please. <laughs> I have a couple friends who will probably watch this who are producers, and they're on my yeah. Facebook. <laughs> so oh, lovely, 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 I'll, lovely. I'll track them down, and I'll tag them in all the social media. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be lovely, Patty. Thank you so much. Thank Absolutely. You. And thank you again for being on the show. And just my thank pleasure. you for Thanks being for such me. an amazing person. I mean, you're thank doing you. such a good job. Thank you. My pleasure, Patty. Thanks again for having me. God thank bless you. you. Have a lovely day. God bless day. you. Thank you. And everybody, thank you for listening. And um, be sure to go to my website, pattycatter.com, and um, just be on the lookout for more um, interviews. But definitely check out The Lift Boy. You need to do that. Um, I'm telling you, it's such a great movie. So check it out. Thank you for listening to Wake Up with Patty Catter. Thank you. Thanks for all that you do. Sponsored by the Patriotic Mermaid. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. I love the show, guys. You're awesome. For more information and updates, check out www.pattycatter.com or thepatrioticmermaid.com. Also, make sure to drop us a follow on Instagram at Wake Up with Patty Catter and at The Patriotic Mermaid. Don't forget to subscribe to the show on all major podcast platforms. Until next time, take care.